cruise news time. And look, we got a big pile of cruise news to work through today. Too much to tease, really. Carnival updates, Royal Caribbean updates, Norwegian Cruise Line updates, Alaska updates, and I've got a cruiser beware story. Uh, look, you could unintentionally get a little more attention on your next cruise than you may have wanted uh, by making a simple door decoration or clothing mistake. We're going to go through all of that. Cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here on a wonderful Saturday morning, Saturday, April the 23rd, 2023. And there's so much. Let's just jump into the cruise news. The first cruise news story, super exciting. This very day, the Norwegian Bliss returns to Seattle, Seattle, Washington, to kick off, to get ready to kick off the Alaska season. The Bliss, the first cruise ship this year in Seattle. And uh, Seattle had an abbreviated cruise season last year, an abbreviated Alaska season. Well, this year they're getting the full Monty. Seattle is expecting 296 cruise ships this year, and that will equal about 1.2 million cruise passengers. Also, it will equal almost a billion dollars, $900 million of revenue, tourism revenue for the Seattle market. Uh, it's big. Let's just say that. It is big and it's exciting. Uh, a cool day for Seattle as the Norwegian Bliss uh, makes her way into port there at Pier 66 uh, to kick off her Alaska cruise season. How about that? Before we get to the next cruise news story, I need to quickly thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's show. Uh, Surfshark VPN is a tool to keep you protected while you surf the internet. In the world of identity theft, in the world of hackers, in the world of ne'er-do-wells trying to uh, do bad things to you on the internet, you got to be cautious when you're using public internet at a hotel, on a cruise ship, anywhere, Starbucks. you, you got to be cautious when using the public internet, and the VPN is a tool that helps protect your data by encrypting your data that goes to the internet. It also encrypts your location. You can use a VPN to represent that you're somewhere else in the world. So if you're overseas and you want to connect back to your Netflix account, you can connect to a server here in the U.S. and it looks like you're here in the U.S. Uh, Surfshark VPN, it's a tool I use. I'm a big fan of Surfshark VPN for us because for one low price, it protects all of our devices. And of course, they have a great offer for the local fam. You can get Surfshark VPN for 83% off and three months free by clicking the link in the description using the promo code LALITOLOCA. Thanks, Surfshark, for sponsoring today's news. Cruise news story number two, another exciting cruise news story, the Celebrity Beyond, the newest cruise ship for Celebrity Cruise Lines. She's finished everything that she needs to do to go on her maiden voyage. They built her, they floated her out, they've done the sea trials, and now the only thing left to do is to get some passengers on board. The Celebrity Beyond has made her way to Southampton, which is the port that she'll be sailing out of for her maiden voyage on April the 27th. Uh, part of the Edge class of ships, so now we have the Edge, the Apex, Celebrity Beyond, uh, getting ready to have passengers in Europe for the summer. So exciting, another cool cruise ship on the sea. Uh, another strong indicator that the cruise restart goes forward. But thinking about it, the Celebrity Beyond is not the only new cruise ship that will be making waves in Europe this summer. Uh, the other cruise ship that I'm thinking about is the world's largest cruise ship, 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 the wonder of the seas. Uh, she left Florida. She's done. She's done with us here in Florida. And now she is making her way transatlantic style across the Atlantic, hence the name Transatlantic, making her way over to the Mediterranean for summer Mediterranean sailings. I've been on the Wonder of the Seas. I'm a big fan of the Oasis class cruise ships from Royal Caribbean. It's going to be interesting to see how the summer goes for the world's largest cruise ship. Now there's finally a big culmination to a story that's been brewing since last summer and it's all around uh, really future cruise credits and customer refunds in the event that your cruise gets canceled. One of the most frustrating things I've heard coming out of the pandemic are people who got saddled with future cruise credit, people who invested a lot of money in cruises that could not easily get a cruise refund. And the Federal Maritime Commission, they fielded tons of complaints against cruise lines about this very same issue. I had a cruise, it got canceled because of the pandemic, and I can't get my money back. What the heck? And there was not a lot of recourse, not a lot of things that consumers could do to apply pressure to cruise lines. They would reach out to advocacy groups. And again, like I said, the Federal 
Federal Maritime Commission fielded a lot of these complaints. And now, finally, after about a year, they've been able to enact uh, into law uh, a process that guarantees that passengers will get a refund in the event of a cruise cancellation. Now, the law is going to kick in for cancellations that are defined as non-performance, and non-performance is defined as a canceling or a delaying of a cruise for three or more calendar days. And if a cruise falls under that definition, customers are entitled to a full refund, no questions asked. That means they're not gonna push you off to a future cruise credit. Now the way that they enacted this law is they tucked it inside the Passenger Services Act. Uh, the Passenger Service Act spawns out the Passenger Vessel Services Act, which talks about that going to a foreign land, all that stuff. But the Passenger Services Act was enacted in 1881. How about that? What an old law. And look, if there's any question to whether that law is still being used and is still valid, well, we do see that today as that's what the Federal Maritime Commission used to enact this customer refund aspect of the law. Now, my assumption is that this isn't retroactive. So if you've had trouble during the pandemic, I don't think all of a sudden you're going to be able to demand a refund. You know, unfortunately, this law does seem to be a reaction to the challenges that consumers had during the shutdown with the refund process. And so, uh, you know, hopefully we don't go through another pandemic type shutdown for two years. But if we do, uh, at least this is in place or even uh, in scenarios where cruise ships break down and get canceled, that kind of thing. Instead of being pushed off to a future cruise credit, you should have access to your money. That's exciting. Uh, way to go. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, I haven't seen any comments from the cruise industry about this. I've read several articles, and so it'll be interesting to see how this is actually put into practice. But this is now a law on the books, and just like uh, Passenger Vessel Services Act is a law that uh, cruise lines adhere to, uh, certainly this will be a, a law that cruise lines adhere to also. Uh, there you go. Cruise news story number five. Carnival has updated their mask policy for terminals, for their cruise ships. Uh, essentially, it says the same thing now for embarkation and disembarkation terminals as it does for cruising. Masks can be worn at the discretion of of the passenger, but they're essentially they're not required in the terminal. This comes on the heels of the federal judge in Florida uh, invalidating the mask mandate for transportation that was being enacted and enforced by the TSA. Of course, the TSA runs the cruise terminals, and so Carnival responding to that saying, okay, our new policy is you can wear a mask in the terminal or not wear a mask in the terminal, whatever you want to do. Uh, same thing on the cruise ship. Uh, we'll be looking for other cruise lines to update their policies, but Carnival releasing a statement out to their customers uh, that the new policy is there, and that's what it is. How about that? Got another carnival update, and this is certainly an interesting story. Uh, I have the other channel, Have to Lose, where I'm talking about my weight loss journey on cruise ships. And uh, sometimes people say, when you only eat a half portion, aren't you wasting food? And I said, well, the cruise lines, they, they work on this idea of not having any food waste. And now Carnival has made the announcement that they have deployed... 200 bio digesters so that every cruise ship in their fleet every carnival cruise line cruise ship has a bio digester on board and what the bio digester does is it takes all the food waste and it basically obliterates it. It, it it reduces it into a liquid that can be released into the sea food waste certainly a big concern uh, but the cruise lines are doing what they can to make the process of food waste removal environmentally sound. And now we have every vessel in the Carnival fleet uh, with a biodigester. That, that sounds kind of cool. It sounds very sci-fi. Biodigester. All right, we made it through the cruise news section of the show. Let's move on to the uh, cruise news topic, which is uh, you know, upside down pineapples. We're going to talk upside down pineapples but before we get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Shout out to the notification squad. And look, if you're getting value out of this and you think your cruising friends would too, uh, just go to the YouTube page, hit that share button, and uh, share this video out. Copy the link, share it on your Facebook page. Uh, you know, let's, let's get more cruisers in the fold. Uh, a big thank you in advance. All right, uh, we're going to talk about some sensitive adult topics. So if you watch my show with your kids, uh, this might be a time to send the kids out of the room unless you want 
want to have an interesting conversation, uh, but I leave that up to you. I think that's enough of a warning. So in my research this morning, I came across an article from Cruise Hive talking about upside down pineapples. And I, I know what upside down pineapples is. It's something that I've seen talked about in cruising circles, in comments, that kind of thing. And it never dawned on me that maybe the broader audience doesn't know, or maybe everybody does know, but I thought it would be worth mentioning because we get a lot of new cruisers, that kind of thing. Uh, up down pineapples has a sexual connotation to it. Uh, it means that whoever's sporting the upside down pineapple uh, is potentially a swinger, a couple that's not necessarily in a monogamous relationship that are open to having other sexual relationships. I don't know if there's a singles component. I don't know much about the swinging lifestyle, uh, but that's okay. But I, I just wanted to lay it out there because sometimes on cruise ships, uh, this is how, this is the secret symbol that's used uh, so that people are of uh, like-minded uh, can find each other. And so the, the article on Cruise Hive is really good. It goes through a lot of things. It talks about, you know, uh, printed shirts with upside down pineapples. You may love your favorite pineapple shirt, but you may be inadvertently advertising something that you don't mean to advertise. And so uh, where printed shirt at your own discretion certainly if you stick an upside down pineapple on your door uh you know that's that's probably an indication that you are into that kind of thing and then they also talk about you know tattoos of upside down pineapples uh black rings uh wedding bands worn on the uh, different hand that kind of thing but the, i just want to put it out there briefly not a big uh, deep conversation but i just want to throw it out there because if you are cruising and you do see the symbol it, it could mean something you know obviously don't be weird with people that's all be adults but I think uh, you know maybe knowing what that is or you know that way I guess the main thing is so you don't invert I've worn a pineapple t-shirt before uh, they weren't necessarily upside down pineapples and I remember the first time that showed up in a vlog there were like three or four comments like oh I see the pineapples on your shirt does that mean you're in the lifestyle and I'm like I don't even know what that means and so uh, uh, that's why I shared that story with you all right I'll leave it at that uh, community conversation do you know about the upside down pineapple what do you think about any of this crew Cruise news. Uh, are you having a great Saturday? When do you cruise next? Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Look, you can show your support for the show by hitting the like button. And unfortunately, if you don't hit the like button, I will be forced to punish you. And uh, the punishment is this. Uh, if you do not hit the like button, then, uh, well, you'll become a bio digester and everything that you eat will just uh, leave you quickly liquid form. Yee. How about that? You don't want that. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you don't want that. All right, don't be a bio digester. Hit the like button. And look, uh, I did this video, 10 things you cannot take on a cruise ship, and a couple of them are frisky. There's a couple frisky items on there. So if you're connecting with, just watch this video next. This is Tony for Lolita Loke. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.